eyes. All right, welcome back to the second episode of April. First thing here to start us off is a treat. We got day one here skating at Pedro side, 7th Street, Channel Street, I'm not sure what you call it. Back then, this was a cool, kind of locals only type of spot. So it was really appealing to me that I was gonna like be let in and to film someone like day one was, I was kind of fanning out starstruck type of thing. You can see here in the blunt fakie, there's like a little black spot in the frame. Yes. And this would happen, it would either be on the back of the the Mark One fisheye, or it would be on the front like, lens of the VX1000. And I learned later on that tiny little sensor video cameras, when you put a fisheye on them, you're basically putting like a magnifying glass onto whatever is underneath that magnifying glass. That's the way I started to think about it when I got into HD and the extreme fisheye. So if you ever had like a hair or a piece of dust, it was gonna be magnified by that fisheye. As I learned to use like mirrorless cameras and DSLRs, I would start to realize that if the front of the fisheye is like, say, dirty, like some hair, some dust, and you know, whatever is on that lens, since the sensor is so large, you will have a very hard time seeing that stuff on that lens. Just that alone, when I found that out, I was like, oh my god, there's another reason why I don't like the extreme fisheye, among many others. Anyways, this little black dot right here was horrible for me back then. If I ever had that on the make, I would feel like devastated. Something like that, or cutting their head off, or like cutting the wheels off. Those three things to me were a sign that the filmer didn't care enough, and I definitely didn't want to be that person, that filmer who, you know, couldn't clean their lens or figure this out, so anyways. Super stoked to film day one here at 7th Street. He did this line quite a few times. I always thought it was so cool how it's power sliding into the lens. And so I remember as I got more comfortable after he hit the lens, I started to kind of shove the camera like into the power slide to kind of exaggerate it. And I'm pretty sure that if someone else would have hit my lens like that, I would have had a different voice. But since it was him, I was like, oh, it's cool. Mm -hmm. It was also my first opportunity to film a skater who would just keep repeating his tricks. Like he wanted to get them better, he wanted to do them better, and I wasn't really used to that. As filmers, I feel like a lot of people aren't used to the skater wanting to redo a trick. It's usually you have to get it right the first try and it's kind of like pulling teeth if you want to ask for another one or, or they're doing something so gnarly that you definitely won't ask for another one. But with day one, it was, he, could, he wasn't stopping. He just kept repeating and kept repeating. I remember when I got this clip, I probably hit John up, John Holland, and I was so excited, I think, when I got it. Like, all right, I got a good clip for the montage. So that was a big deal for me. Now we're in Long Beach at that ledge into a tight little bank or bank to ledge. This was that spot that Tim Tim talked about in the last episode. So I went the other way off the- Off the bank? Back lip and then popped off fake in the middle. Oh, okay. So we must have went there a couple days later. <laughs> Stefan Atardo right here. I think a fly flew into his eye. <laughs> I'm like pointing to the ledge like... It's over here. I'm being a dick, you know, I'm like, hey, the ledge is over here, man. So when I would start filming someone for a Tramso video, I would end up by default kind of being like the filmer for all of their friends too. So they would bring whoever they wanted to bring on the session and then I would film those people as well. Back then and now, you can network really easily without even knowing what networking really is. Because if you 
make friends with all their friends and you know they like you or they like how you film then that could lead to other jobs down the line possibly with other companies that they skate for Pole jam back 180, Stefan Matardo's doing. You can see me in the background. I'm shooting 16 down there. I'm not sure who I had film that static shot, but I've most likely shot the static shot just for audio. Now we're back at Eastern Ledges. Leo's doing a pretty rad first trick here. He's alling over to like front crook to fakie on the other side. <laughs> you alright? Yeah, this switchback nose grind up that ledge was gnarly. That up ledge was hard to skate. I kind of blew it. <laughs> I think I should have made it less steep. If I can go back, I'd make it less steep. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> Slams like that, those are the worst because you have to act so fast to get that camera up in the air and take it to whatever shoulder, the opposite shoulder you're holding the camera on. There were holes in the ground, like from posts holding up buildings. I guess I got lazy and I never covered up the holes, but my wheel would get stuck in one of those holes. If I ever see a single trick static, I'm most likely doing that, like I said, for 16. And then this next clip right here of Chris Haslam. Think about this clip. This is definitely before it's time. Crooked grind up, front foot flip out. Crooked grind, nolly flip, front foot. Crooked grind, nolly front foot flip out. You can see Sia Trin right here rolling on my filmer board while taking a sequence. He might have been the first to adopt digital, and so he had a digital camera that would shoot sequences. And then he started getting into digital cameras that had large enough sensors to shoot stills with them. This could have been that camera, I don't know. But I want to say that he would have been the first photographer I know to take moving sequences like this. He was working at Transworld back then. He was very hands-on with like layouts and whatnot. So I'm sure if he was doing it, it was going to get used. Sutrin being one of the originals. And I questionably just film it and pan away. And I'm like, oh God, stop doing that. And I don't stop doing that basically till this day. All right, this big four in Pedro. I wonder if I skated this big four the same day I skated with day one, just later that night, maybe. Oh no, he knocked over Retta's flash. I know that you could skate this spot on the weekends, so I'm not sure why we're here on a nighttime. I think the reason why we're lighting this spot up is because we're getting close to the end of the video and we might not have very many weekends left before me and John go into full editing mode. So maybe that's why we lit the spot up. What happened? All right, so, talk to you in a minute. What? I can't, what do you say? Yeah, talk to somebody. Oh, I can't hear him. What's that? You got permission to be in here? Yeah, we talked to the supervisor. Man. Where, where is the supervisor? Where on he's at home. Where is the supervisor? Back then, I would do almost anything to convince or to get a clip. And this guy's saying, where is the supervisor? He's at home. Like, I knew him. I didn't talk to a supervisor. I just... Just said what I could to try and give us some more time. So we gonna get, we getting ready to lock up the park. So is that The gate gonna be locked. And how long? Till in the morning. Can you not lock it and? Yeah, we'll just close it. So close it back. It'll yeah, be... no problem, no problem. So I'm not going, no way you going out. Pro I promise I will close it for you. 
I can't believe this guy was so nice to leave the gate open for us and let and trust me to lock it for him when I left. That that does not happen. So thanks to you. So he's gonna lock the gate, but he's gonna leave it open for us. All right, we're back at it. Photoshop your arms. Dang, both hands down. And the very next one makes it one hand down. You got Shiley here talking to him like, take it, chalk it up. Uh, I've been chalking that shit up the style. <laughs> hand up, I'm like, that's the style point right there. That wasn't none of this shit, like, fucking you know, trying to keep yourself alive on the board, like, fucking. He uh, threw some other skaters under the bus about who uh, lands with their hands down, but uh, I cut that out. More on the grab now, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, this was cool. I really liked this spot. I don't know who found it, if I found it. Leo found it. This bump to frontside wall ride, but it wasn't on a wall. You know, it's on this one of those weird gates. Tricks like this, to me, would stand out in this part. I really like this clip. When he hits the door, you see like a ripple effect of when he, you know, actually hits it. I like this clip. I love filming rolling long lens. This is something that I haven't talked about before. I remember at one point in time, I saw something in a movie where they had like a counterbalance underneath the camera. And so I instantly was like, oh, I'll try that with filming long lens. And so I got a long quarter 20 screw and I put a weight, like a two and a half pound weight on there and I would tighten it down and I would lock that into the bottom of my VX. You know, it probably sit like six or seven inches below the camera and it would keep everything really nice and stable. And I'm most likely using it right here. If I could, if I, depending on how I was filming, I would still be zooming with the zoom ring or this clip, I could be using the toggles because if I'm like underslung and I'm holding the camera really low, then it was easy to use my thumb on the toggles. Anyways, yeah, I like the way this clip came out. It's kind of rare that I like the way a clip comes out. Zooming in, zooming out, zooming in again. A lot of zooming. That's it for this episode. So I'll see y'all back in the first episode of May. Where is the Super Bowl? Hasta luego. Ladies at home. <laughs> <laughs>